This is Three Questions with Morgan Michael. I know you're a podcaster. You got to get one of these like awesome soundboards, right? Like, I don't know if it, this, this thing, like this thing changed my life. See? I got it. I got everything, right? So it's, uh, I know you're a podcaster. Morgan, it is so great uh, to have you on the podcast. Uh, if you, anyone who's listening, uh, check out her Instagram, especially. It is very insightful. It's very uplifting. It's like one of my favorites to, you're actually so full of positive energy. And I think that's uh, really meaningful. And uh, you, some, we were just talking before the podcast, some of your reflections on Instagram just make me feel so embarrassed of like what I share. Cause like mine are like two word, <laughs> you know, like, Hey, like Sunday, everybody. And that's it. And I read yours today and it was like really profound and insightful. And I just love how you kind of use it like as a blog with visuals and um, it, it, it's, it's awesome. And so, um, Morgan is from actually Victoria, BC. We've connected, I've actually been on her podcast, uh, before as well. And, uh, you'll see the link to that in the description, but I really appreciate you taking the time to be here and to do three questions. Uh, cause I know you inspire so many educators around the world with all that you share. So when you look back like at your career and you look back at your own school, uh, experience, who's a teacher that inspired you and why? Oh, wow. Well, first of all, thank you so much, George, for having me on. It's exciting to be here. And um, yeah, basically, when it comes to teachers, I have one teacher that really stands out. Uh, his name was Mr. Graham, and he was really unorthodox. He was a drama teacher and really different than the kind of teacher that I am, but he still inspired me. So he was, he spoke in a British accent. He spoke in metaphors. He mm -hmm. wore these crazy vests that he had, like, custom designed brocade really out there stuff he wore these little hats um but he took us all in in grade eight when we came into high school as a grade eight to 12 school and he would make us learn the road not taken by robert frost and then he'd teach us to juggle and he'd make us well <laughs> he said we could take the zero but he right. would essentially make us do this in front of our peers at a time when honestly it was like the most terrifying thing to to be an outcast of any kind, right? So yeah. we were all totally terrified in his class, but he, he always said like, you could take the zero. And so we would stand there having learned to juggle and then essentially recite poetry in front of each other. And essentially he was like, you know, you've got to learn to either succeed or if you're gonna fail, you're gonna fail gloriously. And that was always his tagline, he was amazing. Um, Love we, that. you know, he was always, always there for me in so many ways. He, uh, you know, whenever I went through hard times, he would just, he would just see who you were and give you the break that you needed or the push that you mm -hmm. needed. Um, we became friends, you know, like later on into the, into the school, into my school career. And mm -hmm. I remember graduating and writing him this big, long letter, just saying how much I adored him and just thank him for everything he had done and actually later we we would go for coffee when I graduated and a lot of the, his students would you know we were super tight mm -hmm. with him he was just like family and I remember getting this phone call from him kind of sad but I got this phone call from him um, just saying that he had actually gotten terminal cancer and so um, I remember just kind of connecting with him during that point in his life and looking back and just feeling so inspired by everything that he had done and this one time he he asked me to come over and his wife opened the door to his, you know, to his house and, you know, she gave me a big hug and led me down the hallway. And at this point he was, he was pretty far gone, but mm -hmm. I remember looking on the wall of his house and there framed was that letter that I'd written in grade 12. And I just, I think that moment was really, um, that was a pivotal moment for me because I realized, I really realized that it wasn't just about him having made this impact mm -hmm. on me, but the fact that I actually had so long ago had sort of touched mm -hmm. him too, you know, like, and, and so that was a really powerful moment that stayed with me forever. And I think it was a big reason why I became a teacher, you know, that connection mm -hmm. just, it's not necessarily about content. It's really about that connection and your relationship and seeing each other as humans first, right? So that's what I like to bring the essence of Mr. Graham to my classroom, right? No, that's amazing. And like, I, I just love hearing that story. And one of the things that I often share is really, is, as you, you know, beautifully shared, um, is that 
I would talk to students and say, like, you can have an impact on me too. And I learned this from uh, a colleague of mine. His name is Dale Wanchuk, and he actually passed away very young. And I remember him saying that uh, he would tell students, like, if, if, if you know, like, be the person that if I see you outside of school, I would cross the street to come talk to. Right. Like, mm-hmm. and really, and I always thought about that. And I, I, I share that story with so many people and like really understanding that we have these experiences, like we're all human too, right? Like we want to, as educators, want to be respected by our students, want to be cared for uh, as just as we care for them too, because we, we work with these people every single day. And, and that's, that's such a, an amazing story um, of your teacher and just think of that impact and just having that, 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 that was, that was amazing. I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that actually. So, <laughs> so I, I appreciate you sharing that. So yeah. when you look at, um, your career, uh, I don't know how many jobs you've had. I know that you're teaching currently grade one and two, is that you said you're doing a split class? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah so, so when you're looking back at your career and, you know, we're thinking about impact that we had, who, who's like an administrator, you know, uh, vice principal, principal, maybe even, you know, not necessarily when you were a kid, uh, maybe as a teacher or either, who's someone that inspired you and why? I've had a few people that, I mean, I'm a real people person too. So I just, I love connecting and I see the good in everybody, I think. But there was a particular teacher who ended up as my administrator. So she was actually Mm -hmm. my mentor teacher when I was, you know, 22 going through the program and she was my practicum teacher. And then several years later, she ended up being the principal at my school. She transferred to my Mm -hmm. school in my district, which was pretty amazing. Her name's Terry Wicks and we continue to be in contact. And she was always super supportive, um, just so encouraging. And I think even just in this journey, she's been, she's been such an amazing inspiration because she's, you know, she's, kind of come full circle and where she was mentoring me she's been now kind of pushing me forward in this new journey as an author and as a podcaster Mm -hmm. and uh, still simultaneously juggling the motherhood and the teacher hat but um i think just again that deep connection and and the willingness to sort of see me succeed and i think that's a big part of being a great leader is are you willing to sort of release the responsibility to the people who work with you and just see what they're capable of and then allow them that space to do what they need to do and and show show what they're capable of um because sometimes that can be tricky you know that can be tricky to release the reins so what what was her name her name was terry wicks is terry wicks is terry wicks and she's still she you still see her yeah she's in victoria all right actually terry wicks if you're listening shout out (laughs) oh yeah gotta press the button at least once an episode okay so there's a couple of things I want to ask you about with this story in particular, because the the first thing is a lot of times when we are colleagues, when people that we work with go to admin, there's sometimes a fracturing of relationships. Right. And there's, mm-hmm. I hate, I hate when people, Oh, you went to the dark side. It's like, what? Right. Like I still, right. you know, and it's there. I, I feel that sometimes uh, when people say like you went to the dark side, I, I feel like that's that's more of a you problem. There might be a little jealousy there, right? right. It's not like yep. all of a sudden you're evil and you're just you hate children yeah. and things like that too, right? So like yeah. w- like did, is there anything in particular that maybe uh, Terry did that you know kept those connections you know to maybe colleagues when? Uh, she went to administrator position that because you still connect with her obviously and so is yeah. there something something there because i like I, i've seen that i i know you've seen it just by your reaction yeah so like yeah, h- sure. how, how do you like how how did she maybe handle that in a way that you saw that made yeah. her so connected it's interesting like i i think it's a really tough balance and mm-hmm. i think sometimes you have to be you have to be perceived as sometimes the bad guy you cannot please everybody right. i think she i think she said um I don't remember what the tagline was, but it was something along the lines of like, I left the pleaser in me back in the eighties or something. Like she just was, you know, she was like, I don't, my job is not to please people, but she would bring out excellence, right? Because Mm -hmm. she had high expectations. And I think for me, I really, I love that challenge. I love, you know, I love having those high expectations to rise to. I've seen a lot of administrators do a really amazing job of, of kind of understanding that we mm-hmm. have different hats. And so sometimes yep. you got to put your administrator hat on and it's not personal. And I think if you lead with that, there's sort of that perspective that, um, you know, we're all just, we're all playing our roles here and mm-hmm. we still see each other as people, which I think is, is 
how is fundamentally my philosophy. But sometimes you've got to say no. And, and that's just the reality. Right. And talking about the you problem, it's, it, I think there is some responsibility on teachers too to understand that there is there are parameters by which right. you know these these administrators have you have to play by the rules too and so mm -hmm. sometimes it can be the rock in a hard place you're, if when you're middle management like that it's really mm -hmm. tricky you have many different stakeholders to to uphold essentially like their their expectations to uphold and so yeah. between parents and students and uh, you know, colleagues and other administrators and the, the district and the superintendents, the province, like all of this stuff is heavy and a huge responsibility. And so I think we also have to understand with empathy that they have a lot on their plates. So it's it's sort of a it's a balance. I think there's a warmth that needs to come, that understanding that we all wear different hats, but then also the understanding from the other side that Mm -hmm. we're all human and and we have different responsibilities too so yeah, yeah. and there, there's like I, I see a lot of conversation and I, I i thought a lot about this and like i've like always kind of wanted to write about it i don't mm -hmm. think that every administrator like was a good teacher i don't think that mm -hmm. and i think that's okay and i honestly mm -hmm. believe that i feel that there are different elements of what you do in that role and the best connection i could make with that is some of the worst coaches in sports were actually amazing players and the reality of it is they don't actually understand why other players are not amazing as they were like there's certain mm -hmm. do you know what i mean whereas some of the best coaches yep. never played basketball uh ne were not very good players but they might see things in a little different way and i feel like sometimes administrators do that. now i'm not saying if you're a great teacher you can't be a good administrator uh, but sure. i like as you, i was just thinking of that as you're saying you know i think sometimes I, I do think sometimes, you know, people go into men, they might get their ego inflated and they might be crappy people mm -hmm. after that. And then, yeah, then don't like them. Then they've gone to the dark side. Right. I don't think the right. position, I don't think the position means you went to the dark side. I think your actions might've led to that. Right. So the other thing, and I'm right. just going to mention this quickly because I'm cognizant of your time here as well. I so appreciate that you shared that she's basically still cheering you on to success because I have heard mm -hmm. way too many stories of administrators getting mad when teachers go mm -hmm. to other positions, when they have other opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it. And honestly, mm -hmm. if that is you and you're listening right now, you suck. Like I'm telling you straight <laughs> up, if you are a leader and you are not help if if you are mad because someone has elevated you're you're mm -hmm. the issue now you're not then you've then you know what then you've gone to the dark side you've lost <laughs> you've lost sight of what we do right? right so i right. so i so like that to know that that mm -hmm. someone is cheering on your success because mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm sure i've experienced it myself you want people to go on and the beautiful thing about this is if you are that person that lifts people up and they leave to positions like they they elevate their goals do you know what other people are going to want to work for you because they're like yes. yeah that person lifts me up like the best administrators i had never had people that didn't apply for them because they were like lifting too many people up right <laughs> right yeah. so yeah 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 yeah. so totally. i just wanted to make sure i i'm very explicit i hate when people do that because that's mm -hmm. you know your administrator is to elevate that is their role yes. so I just yeah, had to get that I out agree. a little bit. So I agree. Last, last question. Uh, and you are a continuous learner. You model all the time. And actually just to briefly mention, we're going to talk about it a little bit more on the other podcast. Uh, you have a book coming out very soon on teacher burnout and yes. like, not that that's relevant at all right now. Like, like, <laughs> like it's like who's burnt out? Like nobody. Yeah, so, nobody so at all. yeah, just this maybe pandemic, just kind of per easy peasy. perfect timing. Right. So I know that yeah. you're going to share a lot of your learning, uh, in that as well. Yeah. But when you look back, uh, at your career, when you look back, you know, what, you know, now, uh, what you've learned, uh, what's something when you go back and look at your first year teacher self, what advice would you give to yourself, you know, on, on maybe how you do with that year? Okay. Well, there's a few little things, so I'll try and keep it brief. Mm -hmm. Number one, when it comes to parent-teacher interviews, this is really, really important. This is from a, uh, an, I think it was a professor in university who actually taught me something. Right. Because <laughs> most of it you learn on, right. on the job, right? Um, so her name actually is Ruth Ann Tobin, so I'll give her some credit where credit's due. Right. But she said Ruth, that I got to just do it. Ruth Ann Tobin. <laughs> <laughs> got to do it. Um, so she 
she said that parents want to know three things about their child and that if you're able to if you're able to sort of deliver on those three things that you can get them on side even if you're having to be you know having those tough conversations so number one parents want to generally know do you have the capacity and do you like my child mm -hmm. um number two how is my child actually doing so don't sugarcoat it how are they mm -hmm. actually doing and then finally what can i do about it so it's simple, but I think just keeping those three things in the back of your head, you like them, you show them the wonderful strengths that they have. It's simple, simple, but it's, I've always led with that. That's mm -hmm. been huge. Um, and then I'd say, stop looking in the other lane, whether it's on Instagram, whether mm -hmm. it's on Pinterest, I think just, uh, although you may feel like you are inexperienced, unworthy, all of that stuff, you have this passion in you you have the capacity to work these hours with limitless energy mm -hmm. some maybe more time than right. other more experienced teachers and i think leaning into that worthiness is huge because so many times i think i felt i felt so nervous and i felt scared that i wasn't doing what i was supposed to be doing or that i was doing it wrong and i just think in the classroom it kind of feels like that like i think we generally have kind of mm -hmm. that imposter syndrome to a point and you just have to trust that you're doing the right thing. And, and over time, those children get what it is that they need to, to where they need to go by the end of the year. Um, or you at least meet them where they are and you push them along and, and right. encourage them. And I think that's what it is. There's no check mark. There's no mark at the end of you know the year saying you either passed or you failed. Like it is such an evolutionary process and you have to trust that some of those crazy days that feel like there was no growth or it's backward slides that actually you are you are creating forward momentum and so don't worry about what the world is doing really hone in on what you know to be true about your practice and if you need to close the door and just do that then then do that mm -hmm. and trust um, and then finally i think as much as you shouldn't look over in comparison claim those mentors in your life mm -hmm. and show them that you appreciate their expertise and ask them questions and and be willing to be a bit vulnerable and say, you know what, I don't know how to do this. And and they'll be willing to share with you generally, especially if you if you show appreciation and a genuine interest in their practice. So that's that's what I'd say. And, and there's there's so much I love, and, and I actually will never feel bad about comparing myself to my your Instagram again. Now, <laughs> uh, like you said, don't 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 compare it. So I appreciate yeah. that because I, I I don't get caught up in like as much yeah. as like I love your Instagram. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna up my game i just right. i do what yeah, i do right go. like i'm i'm good with that right and i appreciate <laughs> i appreciate people have different spaces and i think that's um that's awesome i want to just share a piece of advice based on mm -hmm. something that you said for people that are listening uh because you said about mentorship and asking people for something and mm -hmm. i thought about something with this um sometimes when we don't have good relationships maybe with our administrator kind of going back to the dark side right um right. I think a lot of times we expect them to change and then we're just like, it's a lost cause. One of the best things that I've, um, I've done and I've encouraged people to do is when you sometimes don't have a good relationship, go ask that person for advice. Like you're, 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 you know, up on your traditional hierarchy of school because a lot of times the, the issue that maybe is happening that is, is being had is that that person doesn't feel valued for whatever mm -hmm. reason. It might not be just by you. It might be just like there might be and saying like, Hey, like, I know you're good at this. Tell me this because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, um, we look at mentors that are only, um, like only the people that have reached the pinnacle of maybe thinking we're trying to achieve, but actually we can find like mentor moments with different people mm -hmm. at different times. And I think that, you know, asking for advice for someone, maybe you don't necessarily have the best relationship with but you work with every day actually can actually help build a relationship because it's a way of you showing that you value them uh mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to do because maybe mm -hmm. you don't have the best relationship but i i just there's right. there's so much that i love what you shared there and I'm, I'm pumped to talk to you more um i'm pumped that your your book is coming out very soon and um it's when it when do you have an idea when it's coming out like what's the date i know you said august is a pre-release yeah, so the pre-sales start in August at some point, and then they're yeah. thinking around November fifteenth. And so the the title of the author is or of the uh, book is from burnt out to fired up. So it's how do you Love sort it. of overcome that, overcome that sense of burnout that many of us, even if we're not 
right in burnout. We're definitely tired this year. Right. So yeah, I think, how do you I, overcome that? I think the only issue is people are going to be like, can I have this right away? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, by, by the time mid-November comes out, you know, they'll have that new 2021 burnout, right? They'll have that, right. you know, new year burnout. So uh, right. I, I really appreciate you. I appreciate all your advice and just wonderful yeah. stories. And so thank you for being on the podcast. And thanks everyone for listening. Good day, everybody.